All right, welcome. Uh, good morning to everybody. I, I appreciate uh, the attendance this morning, and and let's do let's start this off right by giving the governor a hand by allowing us to expand the, the number of people that can attend the ceremony today. Thank you, Governor. I, I think it's, a, it's, it's absolutely appropriate to try to get as many people uh, to attend this ceremony so we um, appreciate the remembrance that goes along with this tragic event that we're celebrating this morning. Um, I guess that's the, probably the wrong adjective to use, celebration, um, but I, I guess it's honor. Honor is the, the better word to use and I appreciate everybody coming forward, and I, I anticipate we're gonna have a great ceremony to present to you, and so with that, we will move forward. So at this point, can I have the multi-agency honor guard come forward and present the colors? And if, I, if you're able to stand, please stand for the colors. So if I could have everybody remain standing for a moment and I have Commissioner Jim Gibson come forward for the invocation. Our dear Father in heaven, we're assembled here today to remember. We're grateful that we can do that. We remember unspeakable evil and hurt and harm 
and we remember remarkable response from a, a community that found its identity. Our prayer today is that thy blessing will be upon us, that we may make the changes in our life to continue to be what we discovered about ourselves. And that those who feel the pain yet, that they may feel that they can share that with us, that we might help them bear their burdens. And we know that's our responsibility. And in these times of pandemic, we pray that we might be protected, that the pandemic might be taken from the earth. We thank thee for all we have and pray thy blessing upon these proceedings. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jim. I told him I was going to call him that. So you can take your seats if you would like. As we move forward, uh, I want to take this opportunity to introduce a, a great person to the state of Nevada, and Governor Steve Sislak is going to come forward and say a few words. Governor. Thank you, Sheriff. Good morning to everyone, and thank you for being here. And I'm truly humbled to have the opportunity to say just a very few brief words. Uh, to the families that are here and to those that attended the festival, words cannot begin to express uh, my feelings, my condolences, and the heartfelt pain that we all are feeling. I am extremely happy that we were able to uh, loosen our restrictions to allow for larger gatherings. And when my staff started working on this, one of our biggest priorities was this event that is always held on October 1st because I know there are so many more people that would like to be able to be here today and to participate, and we are happy that we could at least get to 250 that could be here and be part of this remembrance and this service. Three years ago today, a heinous act of violence rained down on our city, our county, and our state. I told the sheriff a minute ago I'll never forget that night when I picked up the phone and it was him and he told me what happened. We drove down here just a few blocks down to Metro Command Center, and I found the full capacity of what, what happened that very day and the way our lives all changed. Today we remember and honor everyone involved that helped us get through those tragic times. The first responders, the frontline healthcare workers, the people who volunteered and brought food, brought water, tried to help our first responders, and our medical professionals as we got through it. When I visited UMC and I saw that there was basically a triage unit in the parking lot and people were bringing down victims in the back of their pickup truck and in the back seat of their car. Didn't matter who they were, they saw someone in need. They picked them up and they brought them down here. And the doctors and the nurses and healthcare workers that saved so many more lives that day that we could have lost, we thank you all. To the families, you suffered a loss I cannot begin to imagine. Know that you are not alone. Our hearts and our prayers are with you every single day for the losses that you suffered. The victims will be for victim families will forever be in our hearts from 1 October, and we will never, never forget what happened that day or the lives that were lost and the lives that were changed. The outpouring of love kindness and support locally, statewide, and nationally, and worldwide will never be forgotten. Because of this support and the endurance of those in our community to protect one another and heal, we will forever be Vegas strong. I'm going to go off a little bit and talk about one individual that stepped up that day and subsequent to that day, a man who I have an incredible amount of admiration for, respect, and just I'm, I'm in awe of. Sheriff Joseph Lombardo has been the best sheriff we could ever have through tough times. He has always put the safety of our residents first. He's made personal sacrifices to that end. And for that sheriff, 
and for getting us through this terrible tragedy we suffered. On behalf of the state of Nevada, we owe you an incredible debt of gratitude. So thank you, sir, for all you do. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you all. Thank you, Governor. Thank you for those kind words. And I would I'd be remiss if I didn't introduce the individuals that are seated behind me, because I think it's important for each one of you to acknowledge them, because they are also the backbone of Clark County and what we displayed on one October in helping us move forward as a community and a government organization. And first and foremost is uh, Commission Chair Marilyn Kirkpatrick. Uh, brother Jim Gibson, <laughs> Commissioner Lawrence Weekly. Hey, Lawrence. Good morning, Commissioner Larry Brown, uh, Commissioner Michael Naff, and Commissioner Tick Sigerbloom, and our Commissioner Justin Jones. Thank you for being here, and our Attorney General Aaron Ford. Thank you, Aaron. I appreciate you being here. And this young man here will be introduced here shortly. It's not, I'm not in remiss with him. So for those of you who may not know, I am Sheriff Joseph Lombardo. And to start, I want to say that though this morning ceremony is much smaller than last year's, it's not because of one October is vanishing from our memories. The heroic actions and lives lost that night will never be forgotten. This year's remembrance is smaller, unfortunately due to the unprecedented impacts of COVID-19. Three years have passed since I stood before you and the public and spoke about the worst human loss in the community and the United States has ever known at the hands of a single suspect. The thoughts of that tragic night and its aftermath still bring back painful emotions. The shock and the confusion, it does not fade from one's memory. And for many of the victims' families, I know that one October feels like three days ago, not three years ago. The grief of losing a loved one forever leaves a mark. So to honor your loved ones, we take this day to collect, con collectively mourn and remember those who were lost. We pause for a time, this moment, this morning, to think of them and to think of what is meant to us, to their families, and the community. Thank you. So without further ado, Marilyn, can you come forward? Good morning, and uh, thank you, Sheriff, and most importantly, thank all of you for being here and sharing in this day with us. We're truly honored that so many people continue to come out, and this will forever be uh, in our hearts, and you will forever be our friends and our family that we will take care of. It, it doesn't feel like it's been three years. For many of us, it feels like it was just a few days ago, as the Sheriff alluded to. There's a lot of things that we constantly remember. The memories are out there. And we remember um, things that happened, th good things that have uh, transpired from it. And for me, so many new friends that um, we have that are now my Clark County family. So I want to thank all of them for continuing to come back and be part of this. We as a community will build a memorial at some point, but we want to do it right. We're going to take our time. We're going to make sure that we remember everything that happened um, that night and the preceding days afterwards. We, and so as we start the memorial meetings uh, later this month, we um, want all of you to be part of that because we want to make sure that we represent each and every person that was there and each and every part of our community. As you heard from the previous speakers, our community came together like no other time that I've ever seen living here in my entire life. And we continue to come together to ensure that we never forget one October, but we build on it, we move forward and we do so much more. So with that um, this is really about all of you and folks that were there. I have the honor of introducing me, Albert Rivera, the father of Jordan Rivera. So thank you, and thank you for coming out. Good morning. 
<clears throat> Due to COVID, I really did not think we would all be standing here this morning, to be honest with you. Because of the way this year has been going. But just like the two previous years past, you made sure to keep your promise and honor our 58 and keep their memories alive. On behalf of the 58 families, I would like to say thank you to the state of Nevada, Clark County, and the city of Las Vegas for bringing us all together so we can remember. Thank you. My name is Albert Rivera, father of 21-year-old Jordan Rivera, whose life was taken from us the night of October 1st. Unfortunately, 57 other families share my grief and dismay. We are all a statistic. We are all part of this unwanted fraternity that we didn't choose to be a part of. But because of this tragedy, a new family was born. We have a chance, we have had a chance to meet some fabulous families over the past three years. We talk about our loved ones to each other, whether it's in person or on social media. And by the time we are done, we feel as like we've known them for years. We take the time to listen. We take the time to show that they are not alone and that we are all in this together. We have met many survivors. who we also call family. And we are thankful for what they do to support each other and the families of the 58. They are a tight-knit group. Their bond is strong, and we get to be a part of it. And I always love them for that. We share and we listen to each other, tell our stories, and it always comes to the same conclusion that we, our families, the innocence was taken from each of us in one way or, or, sorry, our innocence was taken from us one way or another. Through tears and heartfelt embraces, we help each other heal. A moment, I'm sorry, a movement began and the kindness was spreading as the birthdays of our 58 came one after another. Honor 58 was started by Tommy Maher. His motto, be the good, was contagious. And through his example, we can't help but, but be inspired and do our part to follow his lead and spread kindness in honor of our loved one's birthdays. These simple gestures are not happenstance or coincidence, but divine appointments to give hope to a person when they need it the most and brighten their day. These examples were becoming unnoticeable and made profound impacts to the families who lost loved ones across our nation. So I'm reminded, and how can we forget and also remember a humble man who took it upon himself to build a simple white cross for each precious life lost. We were fortunate that the late Greg Zanis didn't just make one cross for our 58, but three sets of crosses for each of the 58. Three cross county trips were made from Aurora, Illinois to Vegas by this amazing human being that we will never forget. And I will, one, I for one will always be forever changed because he wanted to do something for the families. He also felt our pain and knew what it was like to lose a child as well. I finally had the chance to meet him in person and shake his hand and tell him thank you. We want to thank his entire family for supporting him in his ministry to bless others. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. Our thoughts and prayers are with you, Zanis family. He was such a great man. His legacy will impact others for a very long time. And I just want to applaud him. In three years, we have seen many of Jordan's family and friends graduate college. 
get engaged, get married, begin families and purchase their first home. So of course we can't help but think of Jordan dur during these events, right? We think about what could have been, and at the very least, we sh that she should be here to witness her friend's accomplishments. As hard as those events were to witness, we were more than happy and excited to be a part of their memories because we love them and care for them. Jordan would have been the first to graduate in our immediate family. To have seen and witnessed that would have been a true joy. But as a Christian father, my ultimate goal was raising her to know her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to put him first in everything. To know that she achieved her ultimate goal in this life was more fulfilling than anything this life could offer her. We are often asked, how do we do it? How, how are we strong? How do we keep working? How do we keep living? How do we keep laughing? How do we keep smiling? The answer is always, we always know we'll see her again. Our hope is in the promise of God's word. This life is temporary. We are passing through. We are just passing through, but heaven is forever. We raise our children to have that same hope. They know it, they believe it. We trust in that. Just like you, we get up one day at a time. Some days you make it through and some days you just don't. You grieve, you wait, you move forward the best way you can, but you move forward. The pain never fades, it only changes. This past year has been unique to say the least. COVID is not, COVID is not our only obstacle. What I'm about to say, guys, I say this in love, okay? Sharing with you my heart, so please don't take it personal. COVID is not our only obstacle, as we may have suffered physically, as we know that many have suffered physically, mentally. Some have lost their lives and some have taken their own lives. To say that we are divided as a nation would be an understatement. Families and friends have ended relationships over indifferences and opinions, and suddenly we are divided. But a day comes, like this morning, and we pause and we take a time out from the bitterness because we remember what happened on October 1st. But I ask you, remember who we were on October 2nd. We put aside our feelings and remembered our fellow man. We were Vegas strong, we were country strong, we were 58 strong, and we did whatever we could to help and do our part that day. I know without a shadow of a doubt that Jordan would want us, that would not want us, or any of you, to put your life on hold or quit living or loving one another. If we do that, how can we honor the 58? How can we bring honor to our families? How can we as a people become better? It's easy, by loving one another, period. What's that uh, philosopher's name? Help me. Tim McGraw. <laughs> His song, how does it go? Always stay humble and kind. OK, that's enough of that. But you get my point. It's true we all grieve in our own way and at our own pace. There is no right or wrong way. May we all continue to lift up one another and continue in this life united. May we be patient and build each other up instead of tearing each other down. It's said that it takes more effort to hate than to love. Let's remember that. Until we meet again, here, there, or in the air, may we all smile like Jordan. Can I ask? You all, for a moment of silence, please, as we pause 58 seconds to remember the 58.
Thank you, Albert. Very, very kind and very great words to be spoken. So at this point, um, if I could have Paige come forward again. So much anger, yeah, we're so angry. I swear I'll never understand it, no. It'll never make sense to me. Can we love until the bad burns out? And smile till all the tears dry out? Just love, just a little's enough, just a little's enough, oh. Can we love until the bad burns out? And laugh till we beat all the sound? Just love, just a little's enough, just a little's enough, oh. Just la 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 and I don't know how to be stronger Cause it's getting so hard to breathe All the days are getting longer And the nights won't let us sleep And I don't know how to be stronger It never makes sense to me Can we love until the bad burns out? And smile till all the tears dry out Just love, just a little's enough Just a little's enough, oh Can we love until the bad burns out? And laugh till we beat all the sound Just love, just a little's enough Just a little's enough, oh Just la 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 la
adventures, toils, and snares we have already come. Twas grace hath brought us safe thus far, and grace will lost but now am found was blind but now I Okay, at this time, Honor Guard, can you please retrieve the color colors?
right, and this concludes our ceremony today. And I want to thank each and every one of you for attending. Uh, but prior to us uh, departing, I want to take this opportunity and, and have everybody give a round of applause for Paige, our singer. I thought she was absolutely fantastic. It's amazing the guts it takes to do that, so I appreciate that. Um, and on behalf of the Clark County Commission, I want to bring this information forward. Uh, I would like to invite everybody um, to the rotunda here. And it's a display in honor of 1 October, and it will be out um, in the Government Center on display through next week. So anytime, if you have the opportunity today, please go forward and see what they put out for us uh, in honor of 1 October. And if you can't today, hopefully you can make it during the rest of the week. Also, the Vegas Strong Resiliency Center has a table at the exit up there. Um, please feel free to visit the staff there. And the purpose of that is if you are in need of uh, help, uh, you don't have to disclose what type of help, but if you are in need of help or understanding or so, just somebody to talk to as a result of what happened on 1 October, the Resiliency Center is there for you for resources and to have a, an ear to bend um, reference one October. I can't say it enough. I want to thank everybody today for making the effort to come here. I think the important piece of this is the effort and to remind the families that we are still thinking of you and I appreciate the families coming forward. Um, one thing I have to leave you with though, there has been some controversy uh, recently on two additional individuals that lost their lives as a result of one October and our failure to recognize those individuals. Now, there's a little bit of a policy and procedure associated with that, and I think it's important that we recognize those individuals today and to bring the number of 58 to 60. And that will be the number moving forward as of today. I appreciate everybody's attendance and have a wonderful day and the rest of your week. Thank you.